RDP, or Remote Desktop Protocol, is a Windows proprietary technology that allows you to remote control another computer as if you're sitting right in front of it. A misconception about RDP, or Remote Desktop Protocol, is that applications such as TeamViewer or Chrome Remote Desktop, among others, are quote-unquote RDP. While these applications are in fact remote access tools and operate similarly, they use different protocols because Windows RDP is proprietary to Microsoft. With that said, the stuff we're going to jump into is going to be pretty cool and RDP specific. RDP works by configuring the remote device to accept incoming connections. RDP connections will be TCP connections on port 3389 by default. And if you don't know what a port is, it's basically a way to number and organize conversations that your device is having with other devices or even itself on the network. Your computer has so many conversations at the same time, it needs a way to track who it's talking to where. It knows if it's talking over 3389, it is RDP. If you are learning about RDP for quizzes or certifications, they'll probably want you to memorize the default port 3389. However, this port can be changed to increase obfuscation and security. Changing this port does not inherently make RDP more secure, it just moves the port away from a well-known and predictable location. The requesting device will be called the client. In tech, you may have heard of the client-server relationship. The client device will be the device that requests the connection and takes control of the remote device that will be serving that request. The way this happens is very interesting. The client starts a communication by sending a request called a SIN. This is you knocking at your friend's door. The server responds with acknowledgement known as SIN ACK. And this is your friend's mom acknowledging your existence by talking to you through the ring doorbell. You will then acknowledge your friend's mom's existence. And this is known as an ACK. This is you saying hi to Tommy's mom. And now the real conversation can begin. What just happened here is called a TCP handshake. This is super foundational for most types of network traffic, and you are now smarter. Now that our conversation started, we need to implement a really important piece of technology to RDP. Right now, we're having one conversation, but RDP needs to have a conversation for your keyboard, your mouse, graphics, and more. So how do we accomplish that? We accomplish it by wrapping everything in a protocol called X.224 which allows us to split these up into multiple virtual conversations. It's like communication inception. We've got multiple conversations inside of one bigger conversation. X.224 sits on top of TCP and is established in what is called our connection initiation. Now, this is just a wrapper for our conversation and isn't actually handling the advanced multiplexing. The advanced stuff happens a few layers above. This is called MCS. MCS is a really picky shift manager. MCS is generally used in environments where multiple people interact with multiple different channels, such as keyboard, mouse, graphics, etc. In RDP specifically, multi-channel communication system, or MCS, will attach the proper user, you, to the proper communication channels for a single remote session. This is done through what's called a basic settings exchange, followed by a channel connection. Now, Right now, we are still in the clear. This means that anybody can hear our conversation with Tommy's mom. We need some encryption so people can't hear our conversations. At this point, some of the information needed in order for this encryption to happen has actually already exchanged hands. This happened in our basic settings exchange, and at this point, we're just sealing the deal. In order to do this, we do mathematics and send it to Tommy's mom because Tommy's mom likes math. And based on info exchanged in the settings exchange, and the maths sent to Tommy's mom, us and Tommy's mom create session keys for encrypting our traffic. If you don't know what a session key is, it's basically numbers that are shoved into a mathematical equation to either encrypt or decrypt data. Success. Now us and Tommy's mom are speaking Latin and we're ready to get this party rocking. Just so people are aware, it's completely possible for Tommy's mom to say no to encryption and then everything you do on the session will be in the clear. RDP should default as encrypted, so this scenario would probably be a misconfiguration on the server side. There is also a whopping 59 major versions of RDP since 2007, and legacy versions of RDP, as well as Windows, may support either weak encryption or no encryption. But if you're using a current version of Windows, a current version of RDP, 
and settings are default or rightly configured, then this will not be an issue for you. Now that we are speaking Latin, we start spilling the tea with Tommy's mom. We tell her everything about us in what's called a secure settings exchange. This is the real niche info that will be used for things to work properly between the client, us, and the server, Tommy's mom. After the foundational connections that have got us to this point, we have quite a bit more communication that detects network conditions, handles licenses, optional performance settings, monitor layout, text fonts, and more. If you want to know more about the technicalities of this and everything else we've spoken about, I'll put a link to a Microsoft page with the RDP versions and technical documents. The coolest part is that all this communication is still only fractions of a second of data in transit. Once we're done with the remote connection, we send a disconnect to the server, and then the server sends us a disconnect confirm. But wait, the session is still open, and we are still speaking Latin. We also have data still out in the ether that will need to be handled according to the specification of their respective protocols to ensure no data loss or corruption. We also have resources still allocated that need to be shut down on both the client device and the server. Awesome. We have taken care of all the leftover items. Tommy can't play today, and we are ready to go home. We exchange TCP fin packets with the server, the connection closes, and then we log anything we may need to log. Goodbye, Tommy's mom.